Everybody has got their Bible ready to roll. Such a beautiful blue sky, Lynn. I'll unmute myself. Thank you, Claire. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, boy. You better to err on the side of muting yourself than not. Yeah. <laughs> Morning. Morning, Christine. Morning, morning. I'm getting strange feedback, so I'm not sure whether it's my um, computer or someone else's. I think it's um, possibly Dupree, but it looks like they're sorting themselves out. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. We're getting there. We're getting there. Good morning, Mary, over on the Facebook. Don't forget everybody, you'll need your Bible. So if you haven't got it with you, go grab it. Thomas. Morning. <laughs> you have to rename yourself again, Thomas. <laughs> oh, goodness. I'm going to have to really sort this out, eh? I'm trying a different room, the room that's closest to the Wi Fi. <laughs> <laughs> Morning, Lindsay. Morning, hi. It's location. Put on a whiteout here. Let's see. Um, 
service uh, yeah and uh, today we will have donna lead us and christine going to share with us from the word and thomas will help us with singing and i uh, hope uh, our fellowship will be together in this way to bring glory to god and uh, yeah, and to be encouraged by his word and our fellowship together so feel free when we have opportunity to share about god's creation so please do share uh, as is the instruction given out. So yeah, let's let's worship the Lord. And uh, Donna, over to you. Thanks, Shashi. Claire, we might need to mute all, and then I'll just unmute. Already. Okay. How are we doing? Well, good morning, everyone. Kia ora whanau. I hope you're um, all looking outside at the sunshine instead of sitting, feeling gloomy. It's been a bit of a challenging week for me, so I hope that for the rest of you it hasn't been. It's great to see you all here and to note anyone who's visiting us on Facebook. This morning we are looking at... Ah, now I haven't got the heading here. What's our theme, Claire? You're on mute. Claire, you're on oh, mute. Well. Here we go. What's our I, theme, Claire? Uh, spring into a spirit. Thank you. Sorry, it's not on my um, service outline, so I can't find it quickly. Anyway, we are gathered. Looks like everybody's uh, smiling and ready to gather and worship, even in our homes. We'll just be together apart. Um, Thomas, I believe you have um, a introduction song for us. I do. Um, I think I've got them in the right order. I think we're starting with indescribable. Yes, perfect. Okay. Yes, that's why it's indescribable. Oh, powerful, untamed, 
struck are we or are we just a bit numb today let's see if we can actually next up we're going to do our first bible reading from genesis it's genesis chapter 1 1 to 13 as we've done in the past it's one verse per person if two people speak it out at the same time that's okay just the way it goes and let's just start with verse 1 genesis 1 1 the beginning of the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the spirit of God hovering over the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be See an expanse between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the expanse that separated the water under the under the expanse and the water above it, and it was so. God called the expanse sky, and there was evening, there was morning, the second day. Then God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry hand appear, and it was so. God called the dry ground land. <laughs> And he get, and the gathered waters he called seas, and God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees bearing fruit, and which is the seed, each according to its kind upon the earth. And it was so. The land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kinds and trees bearing fruit with seed in according with to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the third day. Then God said, let lights appear in the sky to separate the day from the night. Let them be signs to mark the seasons, days and years. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. God. Okay, it seems like we're running through this very fast, but of course we're keeping our Zoom services short so we don't all get um, screen overdose. So um, Christine is bringing the message to us this morning. Let's um, listen with two ears so that we can hear what Christine's got to share with us about spring. Morning, everyone. It's nice to see you. Um, even though we can't see each other in person, we can look at each other on a computer screen. So, uh, but it's good to see you. And today we uh, begin a new theme on spring and the spirit. And I love springtime. I'm so glad that uh, winter is over 
and spring has come. What about you? Do you enjoy springtime too? I can see a few of you nodding your head. No, spring is um, a, a spring. The sound is really bad. Can you hear me all right? Because Um, I think it's the Duncan families. Any chance you guys could um, turn off and come back in again? Because it's um, even though you're muted, you're still coming through. Anyway, spring springtime is a time of new life, new growth, and new beginnings after the uh, dreary, wet, and cold months of winter. And in springtime, you know, I love um, the daffodils and freesias. I love the blossoms that appear on the trees and the display of spring flowers that burst into colourful life. You know, in spring, there is baby lambs and calves are born. Uh, days become longer after the dark, darker months of winter and the weather becomes warmer. And most importantly, our summer is coming. You know, God purposefully created spring, just like he created the other seasons of winter, summer, and autumn. And springtime in the natural realm of the created world is a time of new beginnings and new life. And so too, the whole Holy Spirit also brings new beginnings and new life, not just in springtime, but all year round. And from the very first page of the Bible, we see the Spirit of God's active involvement in the creation of the world. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Now here, in the, the second sentence of all of Scripture, it reveals the presence and power of the Holy Spirit already at work in the very beginning. The Spirit of God was moving and hovering over the surface of the waters. And Samuel Ryan writes, the Spirit brooded over the formless and empty earth as a bird broods over its nest, warming the dormant life within, wakening it and releasing it so that life can come to birth. When God created the world, his creative activity was done in conjunction with the Spirit's presence. The Holy Spirit was active in creation, and his creative power still continues today. The creation of the world was, it was a Trinitarian event. The Father, the Son, and the Spirit were all involved. The Hebrew word for spirit is ruach, and it's the same word as breath or wind. And the Greek word for spirit is also the same word for breath or wind. Therefore, in the very beginning, the spirit of God, the breath of God, the wind of God, the spirit of God, was hovering over the chaos of the deeps, whipping up the waters, not bringing destruction, but bringing order, bringing creation, bringing beauty. And we read in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, Then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into the man's nostrils, and the man became a living person. The word breathe here, or breath here, is the same as the word for spirit. It's the energizing, animating power of God. And God's spirit breathed into Adam's nostrils the spirit of life. And the man 
became a living being. And Adam was just a statue, a lump of clay in the shape of a man until the spirit breathed life into him. The spirit brings life. And you and I and the whole human race only come into being through the spirit of God breathing life into us. And without God's spirit, there is no life. And therefore, we see the Holy Spirit as a vital part of the creative activity of the Trinity of God, that creation does not exist without him. And during um, this, this time when you are stuck at home because of a COVID lockdown, I encourage you to take time to enjoy uh, the flowers and the birds in your garden. Enjoy the beauty of creation and enjoy the beauty of human life and give thanks and praise to our wonderful God who created it all. Yet tragically, the perfect world that the, the triune God created has become damaged initially by the fall of Adam and Eve, and subsequently by the sin of all humanity. In Romans chapter 8, verses 20 to 22, it tells us that the perfect world that God created is now suffering and groaning and decaying due to the effects of the sin of all human beings. And there can be no doubt that the beautiful planet that we live on is in some degree suffering and groaning every day as a result of the sin and how we human beings have treated it. There's pollution, carbon emissions, greenhouse gases, climate change. We see more and more severe weather um, events caused through climate change, all caused in part by us human beings. Is the COVID pandemic a sign that the earth and the creation is, is groaning and decaying and in, and in bondage to, to sin and decay? Yes, probably. You know, we cannot deny that human that we human beings have helped pollute destroy and damage God's beautiful creation. But the good news is that in Romans chapter 28 and verses 20 to 22, it proclaims a complete reversal of all of everything that has happened in our world since the Garden of Eden. A reversal of the damage and decay of creation caused by sin. That the triune God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit will restore creation. And in Revelation chapter 21, uh, verse 1, it tells us that when Jesus returns, there will be a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth will pass away. And creation will be restored to what God originally created. In the meantime... You and I are called to care for God's creation, that God has placed us in a beautiful world that he has created. And he has given us the task not only to care for one another, but to also care for what he has created, to be keepers of his garden. And rather than misusing or exploiting or abusing God's created world, we must find ways to live that does not ruin God's creation for future generations. We need to learn to live both individually and corporately. We must learn to live both individually and corporately how to live life without trampling this gift of the spirit that is creation. We need to stop polluting and damaging our planet. Let's make every effort to look after creation and the created world that God has made, because there is no planet B. You know, in a, in, a, in a few minutes' time, I'm going to continue my message with part two. It's And I'm going to just talk for a further five minutes and a few minutes' time about spring and creation and the Holy Spirit while we're in the midst of a COVID lockdown. Back to you, Claire, or, or Donna, sorry. 
It's all right. It says both Claire and myself. Um, we're going to take a couple of minutes now to do an activity. The one that was uh, in our newsletter, if you read it, suggests that we find a bit of creation and bring it into the Zoom meeting. And I've got mine. I hope you've got yours. I hope you can see that. I don't know if it's focused. It's a bit out of focus, sorry. There you go. Can you see that? So if you've got some uh, flora or fauna, a bit of nature out there, go and grab it, bring it and join us. Yes, there we go, Lindsay's got some. Duncan family, have you found something? I think there's a lot of flowers that might be a good theme actually. Oh, look at that orchid. That's beautiful. Lynn's oh, pine profile. Yes. Yes. Lynn's actually outside in the in the beauty of creation. Does anyone have any thoughts about Where? what they found? Where's the water? Um, I actually made these flowers for Betty a while ago, and because I'm going into hospital, I'm not allowed to take flowers, so I'm taking these flowers in when I go into hospital. So cre created creation, very clever. <laughs> to see all the variety, the different colours, the sizes, the shapes. Um, all right, so I, I hope you can all still hear me. My system seems to be getting a bit of feedback. Um, Claire, did you have anything else to contribute? I was just thinking about my fern here, how um, it's got lots of flowers on at the moment because it's in the right place and how God, when he puts me in the right place, I flourish as well. All right, well, Christine, shall we hand it back to you for the second part of your talk then? We've got a song first. Oh, have we? Where are we? Oh, yes, we do. Sorry about that. Thomas is going to lead us another song. Thomas, you need to come off mute. Cool, yeah. I was just making sure I had the right key. Your 
Next reading is one verse from 2 Corinthians 5, 17. I'm not quite sure if you're game enough, but maybe we could all try and read it together. It'll probably sound pretty messy, but let's give it a go, shall we? Yes. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, and the new is here. Amen. All right, Christina, it's definitely back to you now. Excellent. Well, it's a Sunday morning, and a little boy stops in front of a church with his bike, looking to see what's going on. He sees people going into church, and he sees the priest standing in the doorway. And the priest calls out to the little boy and says, why don't you come inside and join Sunday school with all the other children? Well, the little boy says, sorry, I can't come in because someone might steal my bike. So the priest replies to him, says, look, don't worry. The Holy Spirit will watch over your bike and take care of it for you. So the little boy goes inside and at Sunday school, uh, the teacher is telling the kids how to do the sign of the cross, saying, you do it like this, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Now you try it. So the little boy says, in the name of the Father and of the Son, amen. And the teacher says, what happened to the Holy Spirit? And the boy replied, He's outside watching over my bike. Well, you may, not, um, you may not need the Holy Spirit to watch over your bike or your car, but there is no doubt that the Holy Spirit is all powerful and he watches over our lives and our world. And the Holy Spirit is the, the power and the presence of God living within us. And as just as the Spirit of God breathed life into Adam at the creation of the world, so too the Holy Spirit breathes God's new life into us, even today. Just as a new creation, uh, just as new life comes in springtime, so too the Holy Spirit brings new spiritual life to each of us, but not just in springtime, but all year round. Earlier, I talked about spring and about how in springtime in the natural realm of the created world, it's a time of new beginnings and new life. And so too, the Holy Spirit also brings new beginnings and new life to us, even in the midst of a COVID lockdown. 
through this Holy Spirit, we are a new creation in Christ. In 2 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 17, or 2 Corinthians chapter 5, sorry, verse 17 that we just read tells us that if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. New life in Christ and the new creation that we are through the Holy Spirit is the new beginning that every one of us desperately needs. Because before you and I knew Jesus, we were far from perfect. And we are still not perfect even now. You may struggle with sin, but God still for offers you forgiveness and a new beginning. You may feel unhappy about life. You may feel trapped in bad habits and addictions. You may feel trapped and bored and despondent as you're locked in your home during this lockdown or, or through other circumstances of your life. But God, by his spirit, is able to give you and me a new beginning and a fresh start. He transforms us and our circumstances as we trust and follow him. Let's allow the Holy Spirit to be renewing us and transforming us each and every day, creating within us uh, the heart and mind of Christ. Even though it's springtime, you may feel a little bit stale, you may feel a little bit ho-hum. Figuratively speaking, you may feel like you're stuck in a winter season. You may be, you know, experiencing a sense of failure or hardship or pain. You may be experiencing loneliness and isolation, especially as we experience this lockdown. But the Holy Spirit wants to breathe his new life into you and me, bringing refreshment and renewal and restoration and bringing us the new hope. Of springtime. The creative work of the Holy Spirit didn't stop at the creation of the world. His creative work continues in our life today. The Spirit continues to make order out of disorder and harmony out of um, confusion. And just like springtime brings new lambs and new blossoms and new daffodils, Let's allow the Spirit of God to breathe new life and fresh life into us today. Let's allow the wind of the Spirit, the breath of the Spirit, to blow through our hearts and minds, replacing any fear with faith, replacing anger with forgiveness and grace, replacing any worries and anxieties and loneliness with peace replacing any selfishness with generosity. The Holy Spirit wants to bless our lives with the good things of God. He can redeem and transform our damaged and dented lives and make us a new creation in Christ. That is the hope that we have in him. Therefore, you know, today, Let's seek a fresh and filling of the Holy Spirit to live for God. Let's allow the Holy Spirit to, to refresh and re-energize us and transform us more and more into the likeness of Jesus. Let's pray. Come Holy Spirit, breathe on us your new life. Refresh us and revive us to live each day for God. Amen. May God bless you. Thanks, Christine. I kind of felt like you were speaking directly to me there in that second part of the talk. Thank you for that. Um, I'm going to hand over to Shashi now for the notices, prayers and blessings. But before that, I just want to suggest if anyone's thinking about it, one of the things that was suggested was another activity we could do. 
if God was to describe your bubble in one word, what would it be? Make that word out of things you have around your house, i.e. Lego, socks, food, pens, and share it at the end of the service. So if you want to join in on that activity, give it some thought. And after Shashi's finished sharing, we can all share that together. Blessings. Shashi, over. Great. Yeah. So thank you, uh, Christine. Thank you, Donna. Thank you for the word which you shared with us and encouraging our hearts and uh, I pray that come Holy Spirit into our bubbles wherever we are and meet us into our needs where we are uh, so that we would be encouraged, strengthened and find peace of God to face uh, no matter what we might be facing. Uh, this morning, uh, just uh, before we pray, uh, just to remind a few things, I hope uh, you are receiving emails uh, from uh, every week and uh, following what uh, happening around and so uh, please refer to the emails for the details just a few things to uh, mention is that uh, continue to pray for generosity project and if the Lord lays on your heart uh, to contribute towards generosity project or if you have even a question about generosity project please feel free to email me or contact me or uh, any of our vestry members or the wardens and we would be very happy to uh, help you with the answers. Uh, next Sunday, uh, we are going to celebrate as a community uh, and the Holy Spirit Sunday in the Spring in the Spirit series. And we will have Peter and Lorraine Lloyd come and share with us. So we are looking forward to their sharing. Uh, and uh, they will be sharing from Book of Acts. So, yeah, let's uh, pray uh, as the Lord uh, leads them to speak to us and uh, maybe be encouraged and strengthened as we uh, fellowship together next Sunday again uh, via Zoom uh, because I'm not anticipating that we're going to go back to the building very quickly uh, because of the current case is still not resolved. So let's pray that uh, it may happen so that we may be able to have a fellowship in person. Also, on the coming Wednesday, I'm going to, uh, as we do the midweek service, um, I'm going to have a Bishop Ross uh, speak to us, in a sense. He's speaking to many parishes via digital platform uh, that is, uh, he has supplied to us uh, his uh, uh, sermon and uh, text and all that. So, this Wednesday, Bishop Ross will uh, be a kind of sharing his sermon to us. Uh, uh, why uh, why the link so, uh, yeah if you want to check out later on you can do that on facebook or uh, or yeah and and you can uh, be blessed by that too uh, so those are some of the few notices and uh, please get in touch with one another by phone or your means of communication and let's check on and look after one another in this time of trying times of this lockdowns. It is uh, this is the fourth Sunday we are here. Uh, thank you for your perseverance and patience uh, to hanging in uh, through these times. Let me pray for us together uh, this morning as we as we seek the Lord uh, and as we as we have heard the word. Let's let's pray that the Spirit leads us, guides us, um, as we see the creation, but also we affirm that we are a new creation. And, and if you're struggling with it, to ask the Lord to move, move into, our, into our bubbles in our hearts, in our hearts and minds, to bring that new creation and reaffirmation of who we are uh, in Him. So join with me as I pray. Lord, our Heavenly Father, our caring and creating God, we thank you for your gifts in creation, for our world, because we see the heavens and skies which declare your glory. Lord, as we see the land and its beauty and its resources, we give you thanks for the rich heritage you have blessed us with. And Lord, this morning we pray especially for all those people who are in authority, who make decisions about the resources of the earth. We pray that you may, as we heard this morning, you may give us grace and courage that we may use these gifts which you've given us in creation responsibly. Lord, we thank you for people who work on the land and on sea, 
in our city and in our industry and our uh, agriculture sector, Lord. We thank you for each of them. We pray that all may enjoy the fruit of their labors and marvel at your creation, O oh God. We thank you for the gift of the artist and scientist and visionaries through whom you make your creation and your work made known to the humanity. We thank you, God, that you give us gift of life. And we thank you this day that we can come to you and we especially pray for those of us who are in a lockdown situation and restricted in this way, as well as those others who've been restricted by the life circumstances in prisons, refugees, and those who are struggling with their disabilities, those who struggle with all various kinds of sicknesses, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically. We pray, O oh God, for your fullness and for your healing in the name of Jesus for each of those people and your presence in each of those places, Lord. We thank you for our government. We thank you for politics, people, uh, people who run the country. We thank you for medical science. We may thank you for social and relief work. And above all, we thank you for our church, our life together as your people. Lord, we pray today that you would help us to be responsible people to caring for your creation. We thank you that you have called us to celebrate your creation. Give us reverence for life in your world, O oh God. We thank you for your redeeming love. May your word strengthen us to love as you love us, O oh God. So, Lord, God, creator, bring us new life. Jesus, Redeemer, renew us. And we pray, O Holy Spirit, you strengthen us and guide us. Lord, we pray for your grace and your mercy through this day, that you may inspire us, you may strengthen us, and help, and help us to walk in your ways. You're welcome to join with me in a prayer. Jesus Christ taught us to pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And as we finish our time together, May Christ, Holy, Healing, Enabling Holy Spirit be with you every step of the way and be your guide as your road changes and turns and as you manage your life in your bubbles. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. So, yeah, now let's take time to describe God in your bubble in a word or two. Yeah, feel free to unmute yourself and uh, go for it. Give a chance to others too, not just one person. Hey. Our, our bubble is peace. <laughs> oh. Zoom, zoom. <laughs> zoom, zoom. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what else can you describe God in your bubble? Yeah, in our bubble, God has been playing puzzles and uh, doing a painting. <laughs> nice. Right, alone, alone kiwi, yes. Oh, I got that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, there's ours nobody else. Ours is my... birthdays. Birthdays. You know, I've got one today. Celebrations in your bubble. 